Good morning, everybody. My name is Tatiana Hema. I am program officer of, uh, in MedPol at the Mediterranean Action Plan Barcelona Convention. I'm going to inform you today about the regional plan that have been adopted uh, by the contracting parties to the Barcelona Convention uh, on the marine litter. And after uh, listening uh, very carefully to the first presentations made on the impact of marine litter and the research on microplastic, I think now it's my right time to speak about what we are doing in the Mediterranean uh, in order to uh, manage uh, marine litter in an environmental sound manner. Let me start first by uh, saying some words about my organization, uh, what it is UNEPMAP, what it is Barcelona Convention, most of you are familiar with it. However, I'm taking this opportunity uh, to provide you some information on that. Uh, Mediterranean Action Plan is the first regional sea established in the framework of UNEP in the Mediterranean uh, following the Stockholm Convention. It was established in 75 and it was followed by the adoption of the Barcelona Convention in 76. And they were both documents, Mediterranean Action Plan and Barcelona Convention, they were substantively revised in 95 in order to take into account sustainable development and the Rio principles. What we do since 75? We are a catalyzer of action at regional and national level uh, through the uh, period periodic assessment on status and threats of the marine and coastal environment. We coordinate an integrated now, but in the past we have done only a, a coordinated monitoring, pollution monitoring uh, program in the Mediterranean. And now in the framework of the ecosystem approach, we would like very much to extend the scope of this monitoring to cover many other elements, including the biodiversity and fisheries. We also support countries by undertaking, preparing, adopting, and supporting implementation of regional strategies, programs, and measures related to different aspects of, in order to protect marine and coastal environment. The system has established uh, a network of uh, uh, seven thematic programs or regional activity centers uh, in the overall Mediterranean, one of which is the MEDPOL program, which is located here in Athens at the coordinating unit for the Mediterranean Action Plan, which is providing the secretariat functions to the Barcelona Convention. And of course, we do have many partnership with uh, many agencies, uh, United Nations agencies, uh, European Union related agencies, uh, civil society, and we also have a considerable number of uh, NGOs which are partners to UNEPMA. Now, with regard to the uh, marine litter and solid waste management, uh, UNEPMAP uh, legal framework, as I said, as I mentioned, is the Barcelona Convention. And uh, while the provision related to the marine litter are scattered between different uh, protocols of the Barcelona Convention, here uh, in the slide, we have that the most important protocol which addresses marine litter uh, from source point of view and from marine quality point of view is the land based sources protocol of the Barcelona Convention, Annex 1. Marine litter is one of the most important issues to be addressed in the framework of the protocol. Uh, there, is also, there are also provision in the prevention emergency protocol adopted in 75, which deals mainly with pollution from ships, and renewed in 202 that addresses the uh, uh, re port reception facilities and put the obligation for the contracting parties to make sure that they take the necessary measures that the, ship, the pollution from ships is well handled when it comes at port. Uh, the other protocol that is very important has provision related to dumping protocol is, uh, is the dumping protocol. In fact, uh, I would like to say, because there were some comments, uh, the dumping protocol was adopted in 75. It was renewed in 95. And with the renewed protocol, unfortunately, not yet into force, uh, there, there is a prohibition of dumping of many materials. And there are only four categories of waste which are allowed now to be dumped in the Mediterranean. Uh, the most important, or, or let's say the first measures taken in the framework of UNEP map on marine litter are those that dates back in 91, when for the first time the parties agreed to undertake monitoring on marine litter uh, and to uh, uh, erase awareness uh, of the population, civil society on this issue. Uh, in fact, we didn't follow up on the implementation of such measures. Uh, however, uh, they are there and they were to be implemented by the contracting parties. In the uh, 97, 
we, the countries, elaborated together in the framework of the Large Marine Ecosystem Project that was funded by Jeff, the so-called SUBMED, which is a strategic action program uh, to protect the Mediterranean Sea from land-based sources. And in fact, money litter, unfortunately, was not part of it. However, there is one major objective taken at the time in order, and this is the target, the big target we try to, to accommodate with and to comply with is that to make sure that there is an adequate solid waste management place in the Mediterranean by 2025. Now I'll explain to you a little bit later. However, Mari Little became very important, a global issue. In this context, UNEP, the headquarter, which is uh, our headquarter, advised us to try to do something very specific on Mari Litter. And this is why in 2012, uh, MEDPOL, the program for which I'm working, uh, elaborated this strategy with support from three uh, NGOs, uh, Mediterranean NGOs, uh, MIO, HELMEPA, and uh, Clean Up Greece. And we developed this strategy, and the contracting parties welcomed very much the strategy on Marie Litter. They adopted it, and on top of it, they told us that no, they want something more stronger than that, not a strategic framework, but legally binding ma measures, a regional plan on Marie Litter. And this is why, during the last biennium, uh, we uh, uh, supported the contracting parties to elaborate a regional plan on Marie Litter, and I'm going to speak a little bit more in detail uh, later on. Uh, now, in MAP, we are also implementing the ecosystem approach. You are aware, uh, maybe, that uh, at the CBD level, ecosystem approach, ecosystem management is very important uh, a tool now being used at global level. It is, of, of course, one of the most important elements of the Marine Strategy Directive. And then together, in synergy with Marine Strategy Directive, we're trying to do our best in order to implement ecosystem approach at the, for the Mediterranean Sea at regional level. The most recent UNEP map outputs on marine litter very uh, shortly. There is an assessment that we have made in 2010 with support from three NGOs. Uh, socioeconomic impact on, of marine litter are not fully addressed. There are many gaps. There is a need for update. Uh, uh, the contracting parties adopted the protocol on integrated causes on management, which entered into force in 2011, which has certain provision on how to deal with several sectors affecting the coastal zone, including issues related to marine litter. With regard to the MARPOL, Mediterranean Sea is a special areas Annex 5 of MARPOL that came into effect in 2009. And this means that there are restrictions regarding the uh, 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 plastics and other waste from the ships. Uh, there are good environmental status targets agreed at the last COP on marine litter. And I'm going to explain to you what they are about later on. And of course, the most important is the legally binding measures and programs adopted in 2013, together with a detailed implementation work plan. Now, I'm not, uh, just to show this uh, slide, uh, you heard Francois and Peter on that, so, so there is no need for me to to try to explain to you how it is the situation in Mediterranean. Uh, the only message that I would like to say is that, uh, okay, we try to do assessment, but there is a lot of uh, data gap, information is missing, uh, in particular from the southern and the Balkan part of the Mediterranean, while the north is better, let's say the knowledge is better. Uh, uh, there is important knowledge gap from the, from marine litter coming from uh, 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 sea-based pollution. And we are now, have, we have planned to update this assessment and we count a lot on the support from the contracting parties in providing the necessary information and from NGOs working in the region in order to do that. It's this uh, assessment, uh, this update of the assessment is very important for us uh, because based on the data that we are going to have, we want to establish the baseline. And the baseline is very important because based on these values, we have to, to, to see how we are going to implement the regional plan and how we are going to report on the implementation of the regional plan. Now, what are the objectives? The objectives are very much in line with the overall global objectives on marine litter adopted in Hololulu and in different fora. So prevent marine litter generation, reduce to the minimum marine litter and its impact in a marine and coastal environment, remove the existing marine litter to the extent possible, 
it's about accumulated hotspot, manage marine litter in accordance with accepted international or regional standards and approaches, and enhance knowledge about marine litter sources, quantities, and impact. So these are the objectives. Uh, what kind of measures there are in the regional plan? There are measures which are related to pollution control. There are measures related to prevention of pollution. There are a wide range of measures related to sustainable consumption production. And I must say that personally, I was very, not surprised, but I was enthusiastic about the fact that the countries, the parties wanted very much to go in that direction. There are measures which provide for removal of existing marine litter through different uh, methodologies that I'm going to explain. The timetable for implementation of the, those measures are strict. Uh, the latest is 2025, but most of them are from now until 2020, which means that they, yeah, there is a big challenge in terms of implementation. However, there is flexibility allowed for the contracting parties in implementation of such measures. There are clear reporting obligations on the implementation of the regional plan. And of course, uh, the, the, there is an overall message that uh, this cannot be done alone by unit map or with the contracting parties alone, but it should be a joint effort by different organization based on their comparative advantages. Uh, I forgot to inform you that the regional plan, according to the uh, legal framework that we do have, is expected to enter into force in June. Uh, 2014, and after that, uh, the measures are legally binding, and the contracting parties have the obligation to take necessary actions for their implementation. Now, uh, I'm, if I have some minutes, I wanted to explain the kind of measure now, because I grouped them in the way that you have seen, but what are the measures that we are suggesting? Now, most of them, they are very innovative. They are the first time, and I must say that uh, in the framework of the Barcelona Convention, we use this opportunity to enrich also the legal system of the UNEP map and Barcelona Convention with new tools like sustainable consumption production. So there are promote extended producer responsibility, sustainable procurement policies, agreement with plastic packaging, products producer regarding deposit return and restoration system, agreement with retailer supermarket to set reduction objectives for plastic carrier bags, establishment of mandatory deposit deposits return, restoration system for expandable polystyrene boxes in the fishing sector, and some work on how to deal with mic microplastic in the way that we have to work a lot with producers in order to make sure that uh, 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 to reduce at the minimum the use of such uh, elements in the, in the, in for the Mediterranean region. And in fact, we find many elements. We made some research here and there. And there are many Mediterranean countries which are implementing this kind of measure. So there is a good ground in order to go further and to implement them as provided for in the regional plan. And I must say that we are also lucky because we do have a regional activity center in the Mediterranean working in this direction, which is the cleaner, former cleaner production center. And now it is called Sustainable Consumption Production Center. And this is the center that we live the overall work with regard to the implementation of measures related to sustainable consumption and production. Now, we, there are also other measures that have been used very much at global level and in other regional seas, and here and there in the Mediterranean. They are quite uh, new in, in our own system. They require a lot of cooperation, cooperation uh, between different countries and cooperation between different authorities at country level. Uh, they are quite interesting. We, don't, we do not have in Medpola much, much experience on implementing that, but there are different projects. Uh, they are implementing this kind of measures, and we hope to support the countries in the future uh, to implement those measures which are provided in the regional plan. Now, these are very traditional ones. As I mentioned before, we do have a big objective in the sub med that was adopted in 97. We have evaluated its implementation, and it seems that it's still challenging, and a lot of work has to be done in the Mediterranean in order to comply with the having an adequate uh, in, in place system on solid waste management. However, there are additional measures in the regional plan, such as, for example, that illegal landfills should be closed by 2020, and uh, there is absolutely a, a strict prohibition of dumping of waste at sea and the coastal area. And there are deadlines, are, if I'm not wrong, by 2020 at the latest. Now, of course, if you see, measures are quite a lot. 
uh, it's challenging. However, the, they have been designed not to be implemented in isolation to each other, but they have to be implemented in a relationship, in interaction with each other, and in a cost-effective manner, and of course in, in, in conformity with the specific, spe specificities of each contracting party. Uh, definitely, it's very everywhere it is written that uh, in implementation of such measures, there is a need to collaborate between competent regional organization, have you, have you seen some of them are related to fisheries? Some of so there is, a lot of, uh, there is a lot of need to work uh, uh, together with different organizations. Uh, uh, the changing our, the way that we live, the, the, the mode of our life is very important in short term and in long term. And this is why uh, uh, we have to take it very seriously and we expect a lot of feedback and a lot of contribution from civil society in promoting this uh, new, let's say, change of lifestyle in the Mediterranean in order to make sure that uh, money litter and solid waste is reduced at the minimum. And of course, there are also enforcement measures that have to be taken by the contracting parties in conformity with their national legislation. Now, regarding the targets that we, that we have uh, adopted in 2013, uh, there are three major targets, and the targets affect money litter on the beach, money litter in water surface and the seafloor, and uh, money litter in biota. We didn't manage to have a concrete quantifiable uh, value uh, uh, by a time frame, but the countries agreed that they should look at uh, ensuring that there is decreasing trends in number of marine litter in the three media that I have mentioned. And this is very challenging, and for this we have also to establish a trend monitoring uh, for marine litter. That we, it is quite new and we don't uh, have so far. Uh, of course, there are contracting parties individually that are monitoring marine litter, but overall we do not have yet in place an integrated monitor monitoring program on marine litter and we'll try to, uh, to, to develop it now for adoption by the contracting parties meeting in 2015. The regional plan has some strong provisions with regard to the assessment of marine litter and monitoring, obviously. Uh, we need to assess the status of money litter every six years. It is in line with the ecosystem approach cycle. Uh, we are developing now an integrated uh, monitoring program with a very substantive chapter on money litter. We have to establish a data bank, an information system on money litter at the regional level in order to be uh, to provide necessary support to the contracting parties and to the meeting of the contracting parties on undertaking the necessary policy uh, elements. Uh, we have established a regional group of experts on marine litter in the Mediterranean. The contracting parties, they have to prepare their national monitoring program on marine litter by 2016, of course with our support. And there is also a list of agreed uh, topics, priority topics on research. Uh, and the main focus for that is how to improve the knowledge gap and how to support implementation of the measure. Now I know that I'm taking a lot of time, so if I'd like, I'd like to say what we are doing. Just two more slides, if you don't mind. Uh, I didn't thank Tommy for this uh, very interesting workshop. In fact, we have been working together on that and uh, uh, it is done in cooperation with us to promote the regional plan on marine litter. And I think that you, it's excellent because the, pre the participation is quite large. And thank you, Tommy, for that. And uh, we, we thought to use the opportunity of his workshop to awareness, to raise awareness on the marine litter and to make you also to, to, get, to, to go back to your countries and to understand that what are the commitments that each of the contracting parties have taken with regard to the marine litter and to support uh, national authorities and all the stakeholders to undertake the necessary measures. Uh, what we are doing, uh, at, we are supporting the contracting parties is that uh, 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 from, from the MAP system, uh, the countries, they have to uh, prepare national action plan to combat 
pollution from land pair sources. They have prepared them in 2003, and now the time has to update them. And marine litter will be one of the most important topics. What we have done is that we prepared the guidelines for updating of the NAPs. We discussed them with the countries. They were, in principle, agreed. And now, for time, time has come for them to implement in preparing the updated NAP. And from our side, we intend to write a letter to the ministers of the environment in each of the countries in order to raise a little bit uh, the profile of the marine litter regional plan and to make sure that there is political support to the work of the countries in preparing and in updating the National Action Plan. Uh, we are lucky, and I'm very happy to say that uh, there are two uh, regional or sub-regional initiatives funded from the EU and supported politically by the EU, which is the AU Sair for the Adriatic and the Horizon 2020, the new phase, and Marilita will be one of the key priorities of both initiatives, which will create a lot of ground for a more coordinated and uh, uh, supported work. Uh, of course, we do have some projects that are being implemented, like the ICAP project and swim, swi switch mat project. There are many projects on money litter, not for the Mediterranean specifically, but at the Euro European level. However, we try to capture and to build on the outputs of those projects and to bring this experience at the other part of the Mediterranean. And also, of course, we count a lot on the Union for the Mediterranean to mobilize other projects with regard to the implementation of the regional plan. So I mentioned a couple of uh, elements that we are doing, but I see that there is no time. So we try as a secretariat to provide our support to the contracting parties in picking up a number of measures which are more important for them at national level and at regional level, and we hope to continue in this direction. However, I must say that is a big challenge. It cannot be done alone, and we count a lot on your support and contribution. Thank you very much. <laughs>